I want to make a really awkward request right now. Can you please just take a moment and think back to your high school experience? Now, I don't want you to think about all the awkward relationships you had or your athletic glory days. I want you to think back in terms of what were you actually taught while you were sitting in the classroom. Do you remember what that was? Think hard. And now think, how much of that do you actually apply to your everyday life? All the notes, all the presentations, how much do you do, you do that on a daily basis? Taxes are due in a week. Did anyone ever teach you how to do taxes while you were in high school? Probably not. So in these institutions that are preparing us for the real world, you listen to the news, and the world is changing rapidly. Every minute, every week, every second, you hear something new is happening. But why is it that the schools in which we attend, the content that you use, is not changing whatsoever? I want to focus more particularly on science right now. Right now, the United States ranks 17th compared to other countries, according to Bloomberg Journal. And according to the documentary, Two Million Minutes, we are number one when it comes to confidence in our academic ability. Now, I like to quote someone who's pretty smart. You might have heard of him. Um, Albert Einstein, he says, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. And so it lends to the question, OK, if we don't change our education system, what kind of problems are we facing? Well, these problems are evolving all the time. It's kind of like a big buffet smorgasbord. Take your pick. You have education reform, you have energy shortages, you have hunger, you have climate change. The government might shut down in 24 hours. Uh, and I don't ever remember taking a class in poverty when I was in high school. Right now, our education system is structured in a way in which we teach in silos. We have our social studies class, we have our science class, our math, our English. We go to these classes and we get teachers who are so saturated in these individual concepts and yet, if we're going to have this new type of thinking, we've got to have a new type of teaching and learning. And the only way that we are going to do that is if we start teaching new concepts, new cognitive concepts to our students. And these concepts are going to come in the form of the principles of sustainability. And so for me, uh, the sustainability means the ability to sustain a quality and longevity of life while minimizing costs and impacts. And this encompasses five basic principles. The first principle of which I think is probably the most crucial is the ability to think in systems. Now life isn't just point A, point B, and this is how we get there. As you may have experienced, life is made up of billions of little parts which are made uh, tied together of really complex and intricate relationships, and they're all functioning together and relating. And along all those points and along those relationships, we have people, we have organisms, we have stakeholders. And sometimes we lose sight of who is being impacted along those relationships and along those points. You, me, myself, the, the custodians, we are all on this together. And when we analyze these people, when we analyze these systems, we have to be able to zoom in on the individual fine points and then zoom out and see the big picture. This is what I like to call macro and micro visioning. It's that ability to shift your viewpoint, because right now we're teaching to see things on a very singular plane. And while we're making these decisions, we must be able to anticipate the consequences. So unfortunately, when we make a decision, oftentimes we only look at the immediate effect, the cause and effect. We need to be able to look at several steps down the road, not A to B, but A to Z, and every level in between. And when we make these decisions, we also must be evaluate, evaluating the trade-offs. What are the costs? What are the, the benefits? What are the wins? What are the losses? Who stands to gain? Who stands to lose? Basically, what are we trading off when we make these decisions? I had the fortune of being the sustainability instructor at a brand new school called the Center for Research in Engineering, Science, and Technology, otherwise known as CREST. We're part of the Paradise Valley Unified School District on the campus of Paradise Valley High, and we're in the corner of 40th, and Bell, 40th Street and Bell. And in our school, we focus on three primary fields of study, sustainability, biotechnology, and engineering. And the reason why we've chosen these three fields is because it is predicted that these three fields of study are going to be the highest in demand in terms of innovation and economic progress in this country. Now, what's great is that higher education already recognizes this. Sustainability right now is by far the fastest growing field of study in colleges and universities around the world. Behind me, you see logos of just schools in Arizona that are pushing forward on uh, sustainability programs. And so focusing here on the state, let's take a look at what the Arizona Science Foundation has to say. To succeed in the 21st century, Arizona students need to acquire the ability to create, design, innovate, and think critically to solve complex challenges that will, that, will, that will face them. The question is, how do we do that? And the answer is by introducing the principles of sustainability into K-12 education. 
And we will execute that through service learning, through community engagement, and through real problem-based projects. Because unfortunately, we don't get worksheets and Scantron sheets in the real world. So what can you do? Figure out what school district do you reside in. Go to a school board meeting. Speak up and ask them, what are you doing to implement sustainability principles? Because, folks, that is the only way in which we will uh, involve the creative thinkers and problem solvers of the future. Thank you.